welcome to the Vauxhall Corsa. This little super mini is one that punches above its weight. So much so that it was the best selling car in the UK in 2021. That's right, the Corsa outsold super minis such as the perennial bestseller, the Ford Fiesta and the Parker's award winning Renault Clio. That's a feat that previous generations of Corsa never quite managed. And it shows just how big an improvement this latest car is over those that came before. So if you're looking for a practical, good value super mini with loads of choice in the range, the Corsa might be your perfect car. In this video, we'll show you around the interior and how practical it is, detail the different engines, key specs, running costs, and tell you what it's like to drive. I'm Hope Ellen, and this is another Parker's Cars Review. Before I get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on so you get a reminder every time we publish a new video. At the time of filming, the course is available with three petrol engines. They're all based on the same 1.2 litre three cylinder unit. And depending on which power output you go for, you can have a five speed manual, a six speed manual, or an excellent eight speed automatic. There's also a fully electric Corsa E, which we'll cover separately in the future. The Corsa shares most of its mechanical components with the Peugeot 208, but the interior is all Vauxhall. Whether that's good or bad is down to how you look at it. The good news is that it's really easy to get along with everything in here. The control layouts all make sense, the switch gear feels nice to use, and unlike the Peugeot, you get a fair few amount of switches rather than having to rely on the touchscreen for everything. On the flip side, it's not very exciting. Compared to the avant-garde Peugeot or something classy like the Renault Clio, the Vauxhall Corsa's dashboard is really rather dull and all the materials are similar shades of monochrome, which makes it really dark in here too. Just take a look at these digital dials. They've got this massive plastic bezel around them and the graphics are more Atari than they are Xbox. Look on the bright side though, it's still way better than the old Corsa ever was. There's lots of adjustment in the driving position and it actually has six different settings. It also goes back really far so taller drivers can also be comfortable. Do note though, the front doors are pretty short so if you are taller, your shoulder is going to be behind the B pillar, not the comfiest. Visibility isn't the best thanks to these thick front and rear pillars and you'll need the mid-spec GS line before you get rear parking sensors. The Corsa comes in three choices of trim level, entry level design, mid-spec GS line or the temptingly named Ultimate. All cars come with LED headlights, cruise control, alloy wheels and air conditioning. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard too, but they look much better on the larger infotainment screen. The Corsa comes with either a 7-inch or 10-inch touchscreen, depending on which trim level you choose. What's nice about this is it's set into the dashboard rather than perched on top of it. So compared to some key rivals, it's not so intrusive in your eye line. The interface is pretty straightforward, though it's just as easy to plug your phone in via USB cable and use either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. This is also very useful because you only get sat-nav on the top-spec car. From the mid-spec car, you do get this 7-inch digital instrument cluster. It's not as attractive as some competitors like the VW Polo or the Peugeot 208, but it does display a lot of information and it is clear to look at. Unlike its Peugeot sibling, the Corsa has separate climate control dials. Now we love this here at Parker's Cars because it means that you can adapt the temperature whilst on the move without having to take your eyes off the road for too long. Storage is at a bit of a premium. The glove box is absolutely tiny. It's barely big enough for a pair of gloves. But what we do have is decent sized door bins two large cup holders, a cubby here, and also a cubby in front of the gear lever. Fun fact, in this little cubby here, you'll find a little picture of a shark. Now the reason for this is that Vauxhall have been hiding the shark Easter egg in lots of their cars for the past few years, as a tribute to one of their designers who was a diving enthusiast. If you've got a Vauxhall at home, try and find your little shark. 
Rear seat space is pretty good in comparison to key rivals. It's not as spacious back here as a Skoda Fabia, but there is enough room for two six-footers, unless someone like Peter Crouch is driving the car. Just like with the front, the doors are quite short, which means it's not so easy to get in and out of the rear. It would also make fitting bulky car seats that bit more difficult. Boot space in the Corsa is rather good. There's 309 litres of space, about the same as you get in a Ford Fiesta. And you can, of course, fold the rear seats down to let you carry longer items. You don't get a flat floor when you do, though. So you'll have to hoik stuff over this big hump. No clever touches like underfloor storage either, which is a shame. In a moment, I'm going to take this Corsa out on the road and tell you what it's like to drive. But first, a quick usability test in the form of Hope's Car Olympics. So against the clock, I've got to fold down the seats so they're flat, tune in the radio to Absolute FM and set the sat-nav to take me to Buckingham Palace. <sighs> Let's go! So we're going to go in the back, um, but I think... The easiest way to open, uh, fold down the seats is going to be from the back. So take this down. There's instructions clearly. Pull these levers and push. Oh! <laughs> they're down, they're down! Run around here. Jump into the driver's seat. This is going to be interesting. Right, turn it on first and foremost. I'm just going to turn the whole thing on. Um, right, we're going to radio first. Uh, sources, radio, it's getting confused, right, so, uh, la, 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 la. list, probably going to be the easiest thing for me to do, scroll all the way up to absolute, which is not, which is not here, absolute is not even on here, okay, but we like smooth, so we're going to go with smooth instead, and then we're going to plug in the phone, because this particular car has not got sat nav built in. Um, which is a little bit not great in my opinion. But when we plug our phone in, we can have a look. So we're going to go on to navigation. And now we're using the Apple CarPlay. Should be using the Apple CarPlay. What's going on? Hello? Apple CarPlay, navigation. Uh, we might need to pause the timer. Plug it in. It's, it's, it is plugged in, it's charging. <laughs> so, as you can see, the Apple CarPlay connection didn't want to play ball when the cameras were rolling. However, Shortly afterwards, it came back to life and worked perfectly. Overall then, I would say that the Corsa is pretty easy to use, but isn't immune to those once in a while gremlins that affect most cars on sale today. Today, we've got a high spec car with what I think is the pick of the engine range. It's the mid-tier 100 horsepower petrol and as an extra treat, it's paired with the automatic gearbox, so my left leg gets a little bit of a rest. All three courses use a variant of the same engine, but it's the two turbocharged unit you really want, like we've got here on the 100 horsepower model. They're really peppy little engines with plenty of power for a super mini and efficient in the bargain too. I've got to give this automatic gearbox a special mention, as it's one of the best you can get on a small car right now. It's super responsive, it's quick shifting, and is a brilliant choice if you want or need a two-pedal car. The manual isn't bad though, it's got a nice light action and is easy to use. If you want a bit more performance, you can opt for the 130 horsepower version of this engine, which comes with the automatic gearbox only, it's not going to give hot hatchbacks like the Ford Fiesta ST a run for their money, but it does give you some more punch in reserve for motorways or overtaking. A super mini has to be fun to drive, right? Well, the Corsa is on the side of comfort rather than handling, but it's tidy in the corners and the light steering makes city driving a real doddle. 
In fact, light describes everything in this Corsa, from the steering wheel to the pedal weights to the gear shift on manual models. It's all to make driving as easy as possible. So it's no surprise the Vauxhall Corsa is so popular with everyone from learner drivers to pensioners. If you're looking for something fun to drive, you'll want to look elsewhere, like the Ford Fiesta. But the Vauxhall Corsa does have a really nice balance between ride and handling. If you're interested in buying the Corsa, but you're not sure which one is best for you, here are my recommendations. The cheapest Corsa you can get is the 75 horsepower model in design trim. If you are a company car user, then we recommend that you step that up to the 100 horsepower engine. It's much nicer to drive and will only cost a few extra quid each month. Finally, if you want the Corsa that is most like a hot hatchback, then you should opt for the 130 horsepower in GS line trim. With its great value, easy driving dynamics and massive dealer network, it's no wonder the Vauxhall Corsa topped the bestseller charts last year. It doesn't stand out in any real way, but nor does it do anything badly, and that's enough for us to really rate it. The Corsa offers plenty of equipment, a range of great engines and more than enough practicality for a car this size. It's solid, unchallenging and dependable, and what's not to like about that? If you want the best driving Super Mini, then go for the Ford Fiesta. If you care more about the interior space, then I'd recommend the Skoda Fabia. As for the best all-rounder, we recommend the Parker's award-winning Renault Clio. But the Vauxhall Corsa runs them all pretty close.